welcome to the Dowagers. I'm Sharon Smith and I'm joined with Cynthia Schrock. And we welcome you. Today is going to be part two of the first days and weeks. So in our last episode, um, we're still learning about technology and unbeknownst to us, Sharon and I talk so well together that we just kept talking and I had no clue that the microphone had stopped working, the complete thing had stopped recording. <laughs> so in our last episode, we finished with, um, thanks to our uh, executive producer, our own EP, slash my daughter who knows how to do these things she's um found a great stopping point where we were talking about how our house felt like a jungle and how we were so appreciative of how people had poured out to us in plants and food and gifts like that mm -hmm. um and i think going into this right now i think that that's part of what survival looks like um when you go through a very hard situation like losing your spouse um, so I think that that's what we're going to be talking about kind of in this episode is a little bit about survival. Um, I want Sharon to share her story that um, did not get to share last time we thought we recorded it and then ended up not. But it's a phenomenal story that has to be shared on those first days and weeks um, after um, Jeff died. And then um, we also want to share in this episode um, how to open up ourselves to being accessible to those other widows out there who are just wanting help or just needing somebody to talk to because they maybe are just now going through it or they're, um, they're, they went through it, but didn't have anybody with them. So, right. And but let's talk about survival. Yeah. Um, what do you see as the points of survival when it came to those first days and weeks? My goodness. All right. Well, I think it really, it really helped me personally to have people, you know, come by, um, and, and sit with me, maybe not even, not even, not even do anything, just sit with me. And just to know that I wasn't, all alone in this world because it really did feel like you are because you lost the other half of you and it, it and it didn't feel like there was anybody here with me so having someone come and sit with me and just talk let me talk let me talk maybe just let me let me talk about Jeff let me talk about what happened um and how I was feeling um and I think as, as far as um, going, you know, I don't know if we want to, you know, go into the part at this right now about, you know, going to the funeral home and, 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 and how that, how that played out for me. Well, that uh, was part of your survival though. Um, that, was. that was part of something that you said you felt you had to do because it was your last moment of being able to do that. So yeah. go ahead and yeah. share that. When, when, you know, and this is, you know, just this is right, you know, right away the next day, you know, so you don't even have some time to think about this, but the next day the funeral home, you know, called me and said, would, do you want to see Jeff? And my husband, my husband was going to be cremated. So um, I said, yes. And so my son and my daughter-in-law, I um, pick, we picked out clothes that we wanted him to, to, to wear, you know, on his journey to heaven. Um, and so then they, they dressed him up and we, and we went in and we had a private time with him, which. Well, first off, you have to tell this story, I think in the parking lot. Or yeah, I did. Yeah, got the clothes. I had him on a hanger and, you know, brought him out of the car and I said, well, what do you think? You know, this is here's two of dad's favorite shirts. Which one do you like better? And so, well, and you know, we, and it's healing. It's truly healing because we said, well, you know, this is the one that dad, this is the shirt that we saw him a lot in when you guys would go out, you know, or when you do things. So he really loved this shirt. Um, and I, I'll be, I'll be really selfish on this part. I did not want to give up one of his shirts that I personally loved on him. 
And, you know, he would always fight me on it, but he would wear it. And I know he really liked it, but he liked to fight me on it because it was coral. And he'd call it pink. And I said, it's not pink, it's coral. And I loved it on him. And I actually kept that shirt because I made something out of that or had something made out of that. And that'll be a later, we'll talk about that at another time. Um, but um, so we, we, you know, we picked out that black shirt and that's why we picked it out. And then of course I said, well, he had these brand new shorts that he never wore. Let's put these on him. So, yep. Okay. So that's what we did. So we gave them to Darnell and he took them, you know, in and got Jeff all dressed up and ready to go. And then we got to go in and see him. And I think it was healing for us to do that. Definitely. And it's not for everybody. I know lots of people cannot do that. And that's your own personal preference, your own choice and how you want to deal with it. But when I went in, we, we all three went in together and um, I just needed to hold Jeff. I needed to hold him. And so I wrapped my arms around him there and shocking to my son and probably my daughter-in-law, but my son was the one that was the most uh, uh, verbal about it. Mortified. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just like, oh my, oh my God, I can't believe mom's doing this right now. And he, I just grabbed my husband and I kissed him. I kissed him on the lips. I kissed him on the cheeks. I kissed him on the forehead. I, I kissed, 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 and kissed him. And I didn't want it to ever stop. You know, I didn't want it, but I know I couldn't. And, you know, and, you know, when we, when, when we left the room and left my daughter-in-law in there to have her private time with him, um, that she had requested, uh, my son said, mom, put some sanitizer on your lips. Oh my God. You know, and I'm like, what? And, but to me, I needed yeah. to do that. I need, and you know, we didn't get to be with our husbands, you know, every, every minute of this journey, you know, that they, that they were making that, you know, we didn't think they were making, but they made. Um, so I needed that. Yeah. Needed that. You know, um, and for me, I never even, I never even got to see Eric alive again from the day I dropped him off at the ER. And um, I dropped him off at the ER on August 24th. And um, on September 14th, all I got was a phone call that said we lost Eric. I never once got to go in and see him. I talked to him when he was, before he was intubated, I talked to him over FaceTime and uh, everything like that. But Part of it for me was um, really, to be honest with you, I was so, I think I was so in shock because I was so convinced he was coming out of that hospital. I didn't have a doubt. I'm a kidney transplant recipient. And in those first days and weeks, I couldn't even reconcile it in my own mind how I survived this because I had just been in the hospital right before him. How did I survive? And, and this healthy man who didn't have any comorbidities, how did he survive? And how did he not survive? And so the morning I went in there, you're talking about literally less than five hours. You know, my friend and I, she um, went with me and we went in there. We were going to raise him from the dead. Right. That's literally what we went in there to do. Yeah. Because she says, this is, it doesn't make any sense. And, um, and that is going to be a spiritual aspect of our podcast. We are going to bring spiritual things into this podcast because that's just who we are as people. Right. Um, you and I, Sharon, and that's just kind of where we um, track and, and where we lead. And, and that's been a huge reliance for me because while I was there, um, I'm sitting by his body and we are praying over him. And, um, as clear as a bell, um, the, I had an open vision of seeing him running into the throne room mm. and Eric was an amputee. It wasn't a comorbidity. He was an amputee from the time he was an infant, um, from being born to form the umbilical cord to wrap around his leg. So I had never seen him run. And, um, that was the when I saw him in that vision running to the throne room, that was the first time I ever saw him run. And like you, I then got the phone call actually several days later 
and asked by the funeral director if I wanted to come in again to see him before they cremated. And I didn't. I don't know if I was in such shock. Do I, you know, I, I really, I hear your story and I think, why didn't I do that? You know? Um, but I just don't think that I had the wherewithal to even, I mean, uh, we had just lost his mom two weeks before him and I, I don't know where I was and I was still sick, you know? So I think that's so great to see two different aspects of a very similar stories so that other widows who are listening don't feel beat up because they didn't or should have or wished I would have. We can't live in the past regrets of life. I absolutely love your story of that. And it brings such joy to my heart that you had that. Um, on the flip side, I had a spiritual experience of that vision. Yes. And so there's always such different ways that God works and uses things, you know, that was closure for me, for you. What happened to you was closure. We need that closure. Um, and, and, and the battle we're in right now for you and I even still, you know, currently is another one of finding closure. Um, but in those first days and weeks, you're just looking for some sense of how did this happen? How, you know, what kind of closure can we bring to this? And, and, and that's the important part of making sure we realize that everybody is going to be different in how they um, have that closure. And they shouldn't beat themselves up by comparing themselves to somebody else's experience. And that's a hundred percent, hundred percent. And I mean, I, I was a hairdresser for 38 years. So I had done some of my clients hair after they died, you know? And so, yes, there was a connection there, but not like, not like this, right. Mm -hmm. Not like this loss, it, you know, but so I had experienced that, you know, it, and I, and my, when my mom died, I went and did my mom's hair and, you know, got her all dressed up in a, in a beautiful dress and, and she was also going to be cremated, you know, so it wasn't like anybody else was going to see her just, just me, you know, right. and my sister, right. Right? At that time. And, and, you know, in this case with Jeff is my, my son and my daughter-in-law and, um, but it's, it is, it is a form of, you know, Closure is a funny word. It is. <laughs> closure is a funny word because some, you know, people were like, well, you'll get closure. Well, you'll get closure. Well, what does that really mean? What does closure mean? I don't think. It does it ever really close? <laughs> no, no, it never closes. And I think that's, I think there's a big misconception with that um, for people. You know, when, when, when you, when people say closure, well, you'll get closure. Well, I don't, I think it's maybe it's one step in the acceptance yeah. and the reality of what happened. And I think, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, for me, I don't think I'll ever get closure until I'm, I'm where Jeff is. Yeah, that's true. Like, no, you're absolutely right. right. But it's little baby steps in there. And I think a lot of times people use words and there's not always, it's not always the, really the definition of that. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? Yes. yes. How do you, how do you, how, oh, oh, okay. I'm all better now. We, yeah. Right. And it's not in, in no, <laughs> never. You know, in, in, in widowhood or as we call ourselves dowagers, widows yep. of, of the king and, and understanding that our home is not here. Right. And, um, and we're all going to take that journey at some point in time. Yeah. Um, it is, it, there, there isn't, there isn't any final words till we're finally there. <laughs> right. It, it's just how it is. Yeah. And, and, and I know you and I both are very, very, very spiritual, very, uh, faithful women. Um, and I think that has helped me a lot. Oh yeah. But honestly, I think my faith has grown tremendously because of it. Yeah. Yeah. And just I'm very appreciative of that. Um, and that's part of the first days and weeks for me. I mean, of having, um, of understanding what we went through. I still saw God's faithfulness when I was in a pile on the floor 
and I couldn't breathe. You know, for, for me, it was that vision of saying, okay, God, you know, what's going on, you know, what happened. Um, and I had a, a, a huge thing that I said, I'll share for some time on here because it takes a little while, but the dream, I had a dream, um, four nights before Eric actually passed and, um, it actually was the a warning dream letting me know that he was going to pass, but I didn't realize that till after the fact. When a friend of mine took that dream and she interpreted that dream for me and she didn't send it till me till the day Eric passed. And so there's things like that, that you can't help but see the hand of God interrupting your life, you know, coming in and, and his providence interrupting your life um, in that sense. What would you say to some of the widows who might be listening to this when it comes to whether they have just gone through this or even women, to be honest with you, that might listen to this? Because guess what? As sad as it is and as horrible as it is, we are all going to be on one end or the other of this. Unless by some tragic accident, a couple is killed together that's which is always a possibility but there's always going to be a one end or the other somebody is going to go and um what would you um share with women about that you know knowing you know are you ready i mean and you can never be ready you can i don't care you know i have a friend of mine who lost her husband five years ago and even though it was almost a two-year journey of dealing with brain cancer and she saw the decline and all of that, she's five years out and she still is struggling with it. And she saw the decline and she was by his side when he passed. And, you know, she was there the whole entire time. But yet there's still struggles that every widow has. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and, and, and it's true. We're all, it, it, every, every single one of us, nobody gets out alive. We don't, we don't. And I mean, I think we always think as widows or when you're, if somebody, you know, your, your husband or your wife dies, it's always going to be, we're going to be really old. Right. We're all going to be really old. So when it happens, when you're not really old, um, it's, it's, it's like a shock, like, like an, like an earthquake, like such a shock, like what, wait a minute. No. Um, oh boy. There is no way to prepare for it, but I think, and this is what gets me through and I, and I'll be honest. I didn't, I didn't feel like this in the first couple days, maybe weeks, maybe deep inside I did, but you know, on the surface I didn't, I knew because of my faith where Jeff, I know where he is. Yeah. And I know that I'm going to see him again. Yes. Yes. As, as I go through this journey, that becomes stronger and stronger to me. And I can, and I, and I, and I realized when I talk to people, and I tell them, you know, when we, we, we have a conversation about this and I said, but I know I'm going to see Jeff again. I know where he is and I can put a smile on my face and I realize it now, you know, I go and I, and I, I you know, I kind of look at myself and I go, look at you, you know, you have a smile on your face and you actually, there's, there's some joy. Yeah. I'm hesitant. He, I'm hesitant to use that word, but yes, there's some joy. There's some peace. Maybe peace is a better word with that. And, you know, I, oh, I just, that, that gives me such peace. It really does. Cause I just know it. And I'm like every day, I'm one day closer. Yeah. One day yeah. Closer. One day closer. And, and I think with helping, helping each other through this journey, I think, you know what, we, we're all truly just walking each other home. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's absolutely true. And, you know, um, come to think of it, even, you know, as much as we could give advice to other widows, you know, we want to make ourselves accessible to people and let them know that they can reach out to us. Um, 
when you're going through one of your hardest times because nothing, I don't care, nothing can prepare you for this. You can put financial things in place. You can do, you know, make sure that all your ducks are in a row when it comes to cell phones and passwords and, and things like that. But nothing can prepare you for when the other part of you that makes you one has been ripped from your life. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Even your, your funeral arrangements. You know, I know people, you know, put everything in, you know, there's nothing left to let nothing left out. Okay. That's great. That, yeah. And that's absolutely what you should have as much things in order for the other um, as you can, or if both of you go and you, you know leave for your 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 family or whoever's going to take care of everything, but nothing prepares you. For I mean, this. Don't you in those first days and weeks, you literally feel like you're just treading water like a dog, like this. You know, you just. <gasps> I mean, that's that's how I felt, oh. and and I I myself went into survival mode to the nth degree because Eric was my sole source of income. Yeah, I mean, like it. And you want to talk about trying to survive. I mean, my, I literally went into what am I going to do? Am I going to be homeless? Am I going to be this? Am I going to be that? I mean, I literally, and, and I will say this, had it not been for friends along that did a GoFundMe for me, I wouldn't have survived. And then of course, then God comes along and he starts interrupting my life with things that bring provision, which I was so thankful for. But even you never know what you're going to face when this happens, because even something as simple as life insurance that you would think is a no brainer. Yeah. They started fighting me on that. And so not only am I fighting trying to figure out life and survival and everything. But now the life insurance company says, yeah, no, not going to give you the money. Mm -hmm. And it took eight months to get that. And in that eight months, you are, you're just like, I mean, and every decision you have to make and every choice, it's, it's all right there on those first few days. And then there were times where I literally would hang up the phone and be like, yeah, done. Not going to, not going to, not going to do that. Well, you're right. And, 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 quickly you know you don't even get time to well is there ever enough time but to deal with this but now all of a sudden you have to start taking your husband's name off of things yes yes yes, yes. that's like a kick in the gut oh. every time you have to do it and it's over and over and over and over again and then you get the person on the other lot on the other side of the phone call and they're just doing their job i and know they've never experienced this so they don't they and you can't blame them because they've no, not, no, no, you can't. Right. But, you know, they're just making their paycheck. They're just, and I, sometimes it felt like they were cold and callous. Yes. And tell you, there were a few times that I said, Hey, listen, I'm just going to say this straight up to you. Listen, I just lost my husband. And I don't know if you've ever lost anybody that's, that is very close to you that you love with all your heart, but you need to have a little softness to this and have a yeah. little sympathy. Yeah for this. And I mean, and, 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 oh gosh, you know, but they don't know what they don't know. So I'm like, really? And what I'm already dealing with now, I have to school you on what, how you should do this in case this happens. I'm like, I, I don't have this. And I know for me, you know, there's like the list. I mean, I had a list of things. It's like, oh, you know, the funeral home gives you a list. These are the things you got to take care of. It's like, it's a whole sheet. Yes. But, okay. I could do one, one a day and that sometimes took me all day because I swear there were things that you did and you you couldn't do them once you had to do them two and three times and it's like and then you would just your patience is like this much yes you you know and my son would yell at me if I try to do two he'd say mom you know better you can only do one because yeah. it, and then you're like oh, okay I just have to I just have to lay here and recoup it's exhausting that. those first weeks and days it it's exhausting I am a, you know, I am a strong woman. I know, I'm energetic. I, know. I, I, I'm like the go, go bunny. Mm -mm, not mm -hmm. anymore. Not especially at that time in the very beginning, it was like, holy cow. I can't even believe this. You know, and that's great advice for anybody who's listening to this. 
yes. uh, understand it's okay. I mean, I think there were times where I did one thing a week. Yeah. When it came to stuff like that, because I will, and, and, and part of, part of what I feel that um, a little bit of what I'm called to is to help maybe even some companies realize um, how their policies are so difficult. They've got to make their policies easier for switchover things. Some of them are like literally like going back to college to get your doctorate in like three days because you have to jump through whole X, Y, Z, P, D, Q, um, double A, double B. I mean, it, it's literally, that's how it feels. And it's like, come on, you're dealing with someone who lost their other half. They're standing before you gaping from the wound of their entire body because something's been ripped away from them. And now you're going to tell them to jump through 10, 9 eight, hoops to get, to just yeah. get a name taken off. Yeah. And so, even in our first days and weeks, yes, even in our first days and weeks, that's like impossible sometimes. Yep. Yep. And, and so, it, and they uh, make do it so quickly. It is. And so, since we only have a few minutes left, um, let's just share with other widows um, what we want them to know. That's why we're here for them. Um, I think for me and I'll start is that I just want other widows to know that we are doing this podcast to help each, to help you, to help you understand that you can reach out to us at any point in time. Um, that when you feel it's not easy, it's because it's not easy. Absolutely. Um, when you need somebody, you know, to bounce things off of or questions that you have, you know, that's what we made this for is for to be a resource when right. you agree. Absolutely. And yeah, yeah. I mean, sitting across a you know, kitchen table, you know, talking this out and we're like, oh my God, we need to do a podcast because if you and I are feeling like this, there's, there's a plethora of people that oh, are, plenty of people. don't know. And if, if you haven't experienced it, you can't truly understand it. It's true. Yeah. Now, you know, unfortunately, when you do experience it, now you're the expert uh, and you're qualified. You're qualified. You know, you're qualified to talk about this. So, yes, absolutely. One hundred percent. We are not doing this to just talk. Right. <laughs> we're doing this to help. Oh, we're at it. Well, we're, yeah, we are very good at it. I mean, we could talk for hours. <laughs> and we always have. Um, but we are doing this to help other women, other widows. And I use that word so because I don't yeah. like it, but it is what it is. Um, That's why we named ourselves the Dowagers because we didn't. Right. Have it sounds so much more, so more beautiful. Um, and, and, and so, yes, we we want to help you because if we help you. It helps us. Yes. I know that that's, that's so healing for me to help somebody else. So sometimes I say, Hey, I'm, so, I'm talking out loud. Whatever's in here is coming out my mouth and in, in my heart is showing. So yes, please, please feel 100% free to reach out to us. We're going to, we're going to leave our information and We'll be there for you. And whether it's to cry with you, it's to listen to you, ask us a question, what, whatever that looks like to you. Because yeah. we have built, a, we have built a, a family around us. Yes. To help us. And there's some that just don't, maybe don't have that. And yeah. I see a lot, and I know you do too, a lot of women that are just suffering, they just can't pick themselves up off the ground. And are you on the ground sometimes? Am I on the ground sometimes? Absolutely. Absolutely. If I think by no shape of the imagination, have we figured this out and we're like, oh, okay, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> we're not. We're not. No. Uh, we we're are. working through it. And by helping each other and helping you helps us. Yes. So that finishes this second part episode of the first days and weeks. So make sure and join us next time as we deal with... Um, how to help other widows, advice for others, um, supporting a widow. And that's going to be one that's going to be outside of this. So 
Join us next time for the Dowagers. Thank you. Bye. Bye.